Hello oh, there, you're once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has something beautiful for you today. His plans for you are good, not evil. Plans to bring you to an expected end. You see, He's the only one who can bring you there. You can get there yourself, and that's the reason why we live to worship Him. We live to bring glory to His name. When we, when we sing, we sing because we have a relationship with Him. He lives in us and we live in Him. We, we lift up our hands because we love Him. We pray because we know we have a relationship and by virtue of the prayers we pray, we are going to get answers. And that was what Jesus told the, the disciples in the book of John chapter number 14. He made them realize that they will be able to ask the Father whatever they will and the Father will bring it to pass as long as they ask in His name. And He made them realize that the greatest, you know, um, assurance comes with the personality of the Holy Spirit with them. Even when He's no longer on the scene in the sense of His physical form, that the personality of the Holy Spirit is going to be the one that is going to help them. He called the personality of the Holy Spirit the strengthener, the standby, the intercessor, and you know, the advocate. In other words, He is going to be there to make it possible for you and I. So if you have a relationship with Him, then you have access to fellowship with the Father. And that was what we were looking at yesterday from the Gospel book of John chapter number 14 and for the past, you know, three days or so. Now we want to continue today. Going, to verse, going back to verse number 17, it says, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Now, he was talking about the now moment when he was speaking with them and what was going to happen after his death and resurrection. And then in verse number 18, rather, in verse number 18, the word of God says, Jesus speaking, I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, fallen, helpless. I will come back to you. Jesus is saying, going to die on the cross, and eventually ascending to heaven. It's not going to be the end, but rather something glorious is going to happen. And beloved, that is even such, I mean, many people don't see that as an advantage because, you know, Jesus, when he was on the face of the earth, could only be in one place one time, though he had the ability to show up anywhere he wanted and knew what was happening anywhere in the world. But, you know, when he sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon every one of them and lives in the life of every child of God. As long as you have the Holy Spirit in your being, something unusual is going to happen to you. You're going to have the privilege of communion, of fellowship with God himself. Because the Spirit of God, who is the Holy Spirit, he's God himself. And verse number 19, it says, just a little while now, just a little while now, and the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. Now take note of this. Now most of the time we focus on the fact that he said the world will not see me anymore. There's just a little while the world will not see me anymore. But then let's not forget. Now when he says the world will not see me anymore, uh, well, we understand that he died, was buried, resurrected, and went to heaven. But if that's the case, then it means even those of us believers will not see him also. But he was saying something much more. He says, the world will not see me anymore. But he said, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Now take note of that. Jesus said, we will see him. How come it's so difficult for many of us to see him? Now go back in the verses before where Philip have said, show us the Father. So, if you are in the world and you know the word of God and you live in the world, you will see him. He will reveal himself again and again. And don't forget, Jesus makes himself manifest. Those who have fellowship with him have visions of him. He reveals himself in dreams 
and he walks in. I mean, to the very room where you were. He walks in. These are not things that are imaginary. They are real. There are people who are not Christians who have had experiences of Jesus walking in. So when we're talking about, I mean, when we're talking about this, we are not talking about something that is just imaginary. Jesus is the greatest reality ever. And so if we will walk and live the way he expects us to, there's going to be a great difference. Verse number 20 reveals to us something a little more. Verse number 20 says, At that time, when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. What a glory. Now, is said, when that day comes, what day is he talking about? When we have the personality of the Holy Spirit on, my, on our inside. So that day we will know that Jesus is in the Father and the Father. And, is, and you know, he said, you know, make, let's look at it very clear, clearly. I mean, uh, carefully. This, this, you will know for yourselves. Not just because you're told. Said, you will know for yourself that I am in my Father. And you are in me. In other words, you in Christ and Christ in the Father, all in God. And you are in me, and I am in you. So Jesus says, you get to know that I'm in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. So there's this, this unusual fellowship that comes into place. Every child of God is supposed to know they belong to God. Romans chapter 8 tells us from verse 14, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So prerequisite of being a child of God is to have the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life. The personality of the Holy Spirit in your life, active, not just like imaginary, is the assurance that you have that you belong to God. And if you don't have that assurance, you need to have it. You need to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. Please come into my life. Be the greatest reality ever. Forgive me my sins by the blood Jesus shed on the cross. I accept you today. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I'm telling you, because he said when we pray that prayer, he is definitely going to honor it. He will honor it. He is going to wash your sins away. He's going to wipe them away. Because he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for being part of today's broadcast. I'm Ego Luis Diego. See you tomorrow by the grace of God. God bless you.